What is going on YouTube fam? It's Ben here. We are back with the regularly scheduled classes. So today we're gonna start out with just a nice, mellow, stretch it out type of flow. The purpose of this class is just to create space in the body and to feel a little bit connected. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start in a child's pose. Bring your knees wide, send your hips back in space, release the body down. Stretch the arms out in front of you. In child's pose for many of us, may feel pretty easy. There's not too much effort required, but there's a lot of actions going on. So take a moment just to feel what's coming into the body. The tops of the feet, hip flexors, spine, shoulders, hands. Just a few areas where we might be feeling something. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. Give me two more of those. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Look up a little bit, just enough to thread the right arm under the left shoulder, and then bring the right ear down toward the mat. Keep the left arm reaching out in front. Breathe into the right shoulder, nice and big inhales and exhales. Let yourself mellow into this stretch for another 15, 20 seconds. And then we'll switch sides. So extend the right arm. Thread the left arm underneath, then bring left ear down to the mat. Press the left shoulder down lightly. Keep extending the right hand and then breathe, inhaling, exhaling at your own pace. Let it be steady. Come back through center. As we do so, we'll find a downward facing dog. So just tuck the toes under and then press the hips up and back. As you land here, walk out the feet, bending one knee, then the other. Maybe bend one elbow and then the other. Create some movement in the body. Just as a little reminder that none of these shapes that we find have to be fixed. If it feels weird for you to hold still during something, then just bring a little bit of movement or swaying in. A lot of times that's how we can keep spaciousness in the body, that's how we can keep stress out of the body, is just to find subtle movements within each and every posture we find. Just a couple more breaths in this down dog. Press further through the fingertips, extend through the shoulders. Holding a nice down dog should actually be quite challenging. So many different things the body's doing here. And let's look up to the palms and as slow as you can, step by step, bring the feet up to the hands into a forward fold at the top of the mat. Eventually, as we land in this fold, we'll find a nice deep stretch in the hamstrings. You can do whatever you want with the hands. Maybe it feels good just to let the palms and the whole arms dangle to the mat. Maybe it feels good to ragdoll by clasping opposite hand to elbow. It doesn't matter. All that does matter is that you feel this pouring over sensation at your hip crease, that you feel a sense of lightness and effortlessness in the upper body. You're welcome to sway around or bend the knees. I like to bring my feet kind of wide, a little bit wider than hips width distance because that just gives me a little more space to move with. Maybe close the eyes. And as always, like every shape we find, we're always breathing deeply because the breath is so important. Just a few deep breaths can send some beautiful calming system signals excuse me, to our nervous system, to our whole body. The better we breathe, the better we feel. The better we breathe, the stronger the pose. 
from this forward fold position, we will go ahead and step both feet back into a plank. We're not spending too long on this plank. Just use it as a position to kind of check in with how strong the body's feeling. Try to drive into the mat, protract the shoulder blades. And when I say protract shoulder blades, all I mean is bring shoulder blades away from each other. Almost a little rounding sensation in the upper back. And then breathe. You'll notice I'm also swaying kind of side to side a little bit here. Again, sometimes I struggle with just holding things completely still. And oftentimes the swaying or the slight motion brings a little bit more mindfulness and awareness into the posture for me. But anyways, I digress. We have been holding this plank for a little bit, so let's go ahead and bring everything down to the mat and then find a Sphinx pose. So forearms come down to the mat, elbows below shoulders. And once you find this nice square position, once again, protracting the shoulder blades a little bit, and this time it's more of a dropping the shoulders away from the ears to broaden across your chest and through your upper back. Once you do that, you can tuck the chin down a little bit. And there's not too much action in the body here. If anything, we're just lightly pressing the hips down into the mat, lightly pressing the legs down into the mat. We're just enjoying some extension in the spine right here. So take a nice breath in. Nice breath out. One more nice breath in. And out. Now here's a little challenge. So we're going to keep our chest lifted, but instead of the forearms being down, we'll bring our fingertips onto the mat. Once we have our fingertips off the mat, we'll try to float the hands entirely. Now you might need to lower your chest a little bit because we don't have anything pressing into the ground, and then reach the arms behind you. We're in a version of Shalabhasana Locust Pose, and then try to float the legs or feet behind you. You can stay here or you can reach back for the tops of your feet or ankles for bow pose. Either way, it's a nice strengthening posture for the back body. Breathe here for five, four, three, two. On one, first thing we release is the legs. So allow the tops of the feet to return to the mat. Then press the palms down next to your chest and pull into an upward facing dog, a well deserved upward facing dog and then send it back to downward facing dog tuck the toes under hips press up and back we're back in our down dog with a little bit more space this time let's go through a really slow version of a full sun a full surya namaskar a and again like i said at the beginning of the class today we're just trying to kind of stretch it out so we're not trying to put forth a crazy amount of physical effort. We're paying more attention to the lengthening of our muscles that happens in each one of these shapes. So in down dog, we're feeling it in the hamstrings, calves. We're feeling it in the shoulders, the arms as they extend the spine. Look forward to your palms and walk or step or hop the feet up to the hands into a forward fold. Relax into the forward fold. Take a full breath in, full breath out. Halfway lift, spine extends forward like we could place a glass of water on the back body. And then release into your fold. Roll yourself up to standing. Sweep the hands to the sky. Breathe in. Hands to heart center. Breathe out. Inhale, sweep the hands to sky. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, place the palms. Plank pose. From plank, you're always welcome to drop the knees as we lean forward onto our toes and bend the elbows. Chaturanga, bottom of a push-up. Form is most important. I don't want to see any like weird crunching in the back body here. And then pull the hips through, lift the chest for an upward facing dog. And then move into your downward facing dog. Feels so nice to move through that sequence slowly and really just feel into each part. So let's do it again. Rise to the toes, bend the knees, look forward, and then step, walk, or maybe even hop the feet up to the hands. Then halfway lift, spine extends forward. Release into your fold. Rise up to stand, touch the sky. Bring the palms to heart center. Sweep the hands up, extend the shoulders, feel into the arms as you do so, and then fold forward. Halfway lift. Place the palms down, step back to your plank pose. Engage the legs in plank. 
I know plank is more of a strengthener than a stretcher, but we can also feel nice stretches in our plank pose, right? We should feel the spine extending. We should feel the legs lengthening. I think we're flexing the front of the legs so much that we feel a nice stretch in the backs of the legs. And then especially in the shoulders, we're rounding the upper back a little bit. Again, protraction. We're extending the shoulders, driving, extending the wrists. Actually quite a bit of stretching. And then lean forward, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, take a nice inhale. Maybe dip one shoulder, then the other. And then back to your downward facing dog. Take a couple breaths in your down dog. And then we'll go through one more of those nice, slow Surya Namaskar A's. Beautiful work so far. As you're ready, rise to the toes, bend the knees, look forward, and then bring the feet up to your hands, how you so choose. Halfway lift, breathe in, fold, breathe out. Rise to stand, touch the sky, hands to heart center. Breathe in, sweep the hands up, breathe out, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, place the palms, plank pose, step it on back. This time, go ahead, lean forward, chaturanga, bend to the elbows, keep the spine long as you lower, and then pull through, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. From our down dog, rise to the toes, bend the knees, look forward, and then walk, step, or hop the feet up to the hands. As you get here, halfway lift, inhale, exhale, fold, step the left foot back. Low lunge, drop to the left knee, reach the hands to the sky. Then take a couple breaths. You can keep the hands lifted. Maybe it feels good to bring the hands down to your hips or to your right knee. As you can see, I'm kind of swaying back and forth. First lunge of the day. So, you know, we're finally just getting a little bit of space into the hips. It takes a little bit of time. Then from here, we will bring the left hand down to the mat and we'll roll onto the outer edges of the right and left foot. The right hand can reach to the sky or just kind of place somewhere on the right leg. But as we roll and twist, we're feeling the right knee kind of splay out a little bit. You'll probably feel this on the outside of the right hip, almost like a half pigeon sensation. And then of course, we'll feel this in the left hip as well. Either way, take a breath in, take a breath out. Release your twisting motion. Come back through center. Runner's lunge. Tuck the left toes. Lift the left knee. And then pull the hips back. Straighten the right leg in some capacity. Find somewhat of a fold. And I say things like in some capacity because if you're not feeling quite as flexible right now, you can always just bend the knee a little bit, right? Not every yoga pose is going to feel comfortable for everybody. So you can always feel empowered to change the pose to work for you. In the yoga I teach, I just want y'all to feel connected to your body and if you're moving in a way that makes you feel injured or uncomfortable, then that's not really a connected form of movement. So everything I say can be taken with a grain of salt, right? I want you to listen to me, but only if it feels good. If it doesn't feel good, then do something that is slightly different. Then explore through space in a different way. Nothing is final. You know, nothing that I say is 100% right or wrong. Most of what I say is just kind of through my own experience and through what I've studied. But of course, we're all learning. We're all growing on our path. Go ahead and bend into the right knee. Rise up into a crescent lunge, hands to the sky. Feeling some nice length come into the hips now. Sink a little bit lower. Then come into warrior two, drop the left heel, open out. Take a nice bend into your right knee. If you feel any background noise during this video, it's because I have my cat who's running around, but I'm also cat sitting for a friend. So there's two cats running through my apartment right now and they're obsessed with each other. They're always playing, <laughs> they're always causing a ruckus, but it's fun, I gotta admit. Start to straighten your right leg, triangle pose. Drop the right hand down, either to rest on your right shin or to reach down to the mat. Left hand to the sky, and then feel a light motion of turning your left shoulder back. Triangle pose, again, is always customizable because if this feels too, like, too much, you can always just slide your hand up a little bit or bend the knee. If this doesn't feel like enough, then fold into your full triangle by bringing the right hand all the way down outside of your foot. Good. 
from this triangle pose, we're closing it off. Reach both hands down to the floor, hop your left foot up and out, pyramid pose. Find a deeper fold over the right shin. This is similar to kind of the stretch that we found a minute or two ago, except we have a shorter stance and our feet are a little bit wider and the left heel is on the mat. So it allows us to get even deeper of just an isolation into the right hamstring. So just allow your body to fold and release. Good job. Step forward into your fold. As you land in your fold, halfway lift, forward fold, place the palms down, step the right foot back. Drop to the right knee, low lunge, hands to the sky. And then your hands can land wherever you want because we're staying here for maybe 30 or 45 seconds. Again, if you're like me, you'll find some light movement here. If you're not like me, you can always find somewhere to just hold a static posture. But the only thing that matters here is that we're starting to grow into the hips. And of course, every time we find new length into one part of a body, we get a new sense of awareness. I'm gonna go ahead and light this incense while I'm here in this low lunge. And then we will go ahead and transition into that lunge where we place the right hand down and then roll onto the outer edges of both feet. So kind of twisting toward the left side. The left hand can remain down on your leg. You can reach the left hand up. Either way, we're having that slight pushing out sensation in the left knee. The hips are opening, we're breathing. Nice and steady. We'll go ahead and release that. As we do so, runner's lunge, tuck the left toes, or excuse me, tuck the right toes, lift the right knee, left foot is in front, and then pull the hips back. So this is that first version of our pyramid pose. The stance is a little bit longer, and the feet are closer together on our mat um, in terms of width. So kind of a more challenging pose, a little bit more into the hips, but it's nice to do both and kind of experience poses in different ways. Again, every time we move into a new space, we get a little more mindful. We get a little bit more aware about how our body's doing. That's the whole purpose of this practice, right? Then we'll bend into the left knee. We'll float the hands up, crescent lunge. Nice and strong. From crescent lunge, open up, warrior two, Vira Bhadrasana two, right heel to the mat, take a nice deep bend into the left knee. So much beautiful opening that happens in the hips in warrior two. Might be one of the most common yoga poses. Lately, it's been one of my favorite yoga poses. I couldn't imagine taking or teaching a class without warrior two right now, just because it's such a beautiful way to open things up across the whole body. Such a beautiful way of challenging ourselves in a stable position with the right heel being down, with the whole right foot being down, the whole left foot being down. We have a nice solid base to open from. And then of course, it's a nice starting point for triangle pose. So straighten the left leg, reach the left hand forward and then drop down. Left hand can rest wherever you want. Left hand can even float if you want to. Open up the body. Feel like the left side body is twisting under you as we turn the chest closer to the sky. Then take maybe two full breath cycles here. <sighs> Feels nice. I already feel so much more open than when we started class today. I just took a walk earlier today, so I was feeling good, but I was feeling a little tight. We'll go ahead and close it off, fold over the left shin, and then pyramid pose version two. Hop the right foot up and out just to give ourselves a little bit more spaciousness and then find your fold. In this version of our pyramid pose, the hips may feel a little bit more kind of turned open because the right heel is down compared to before when, when the right heel was kind of lifted up. So it's all good. Just notice the difference and breathe directly into the left hamstring. Have an experience. And look forward, step up into your fold, find a halfway lift, breathe in, fold, breathe out, place the palms down, plank pose, go through a vinyasa. So from plank, lean forward, chaturanga, use the knees if you want, upward facing dog, pull through, downward facing dog, send it back. Take a couple breaths in your down dog. 
We'll go through that sequence one more time with a little bit more speed and see where we can go now that we've been there before. This time we'll go straight from downward facing dog. So go ahead and lift the right leg to the sky, three-legged dog, and then step right foot to right thumb. Big step forward, drop down to the left knee, hands to the sky. From here, left hand to the mat, right hand stays lifted, roll to the outer edges of both feet for your twisted lunge, maybe a high horizon lunge or whatever you wanna call this. And then close it off into runner's lunge. Come onto the fingertips, then pull the hips back, straighten the right leg, find a fold forward, pyramid pose version one. Fold and release for five, four, three, two on one, bend into the right knee, lift the hands up to the sky, crescent lunge. Open to your warrior two, left heel drops. The body opens, straighten the right leg, triangle pose, release down. Keep the chest open, keep the spine long. Check in with the side bodies, keep the side bodies long. Take a breath in, breath out, fold over your right shin, close it off, hop the left foot up and out, pyramid pose version two. Look forward, step up into your fold, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold, inhale, rise to stand, lift the hands up, exhale, palms to center, inhale, reach up, exhale to fold, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, place the palms down, plank pose. From plank, you're welcome to take a vinyasa, leaning forward, chaturanga, upward facing dog, pull it through, downward facing dog, press it back. On your next inhale, lift the left leg to the sky, three-legged dog, and then step left foot to left palm or left thumb. Drop down to the right knee, hands to the sky, into your low lunge, and then bring the right hand down. Twist onto the outer edges of both feet, whatever you want to call this. i got to figure out an official name for this because I love cueing this posture, but it doesn't have a name, so I just say roll onto the outer edges of your feet. <laughs> Or if it does have a name, drop it in the comments. I have no idea. Runner's lunge, square off the hips, come onto fingertips, and then press the hips back, straighten the left leg, fold forward. Spend a couple breaths here. Pyramid pose version one. And then we'll bend into the left knee, float the hands up, crescent lunge, breathe in, breathe out. Warrior two, drop the right heel, open the body. Straighten the left leg, triangle pose, release it down. Beautiful openness in the hips here. And then we'll fold over left shin, hop the right foot up and out. Pyramid pose version two. Breathe in, breathe out. Look forward, step up into your fold. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Inhale, rise to stand, exhale, palms to center. Inhale, reach to the sky, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, place the palms. Go through your vinyasa, so plank pose, to low plank pose, to upward facing dog, breathe in. Downward facing dog, breathe out. Pedal out the feet, and then drop back to your child's pose, just like how we started. Allow yourself to reconnect with the breath. Breathe smoothly. Let yourself notice how has the energy orbiting around you changed just after a little bit of movement. Go ahead and sit up into a tabletop. Take a couple cat cows, so drop the belly, curl the chest up, round the spine, push away. Drop the belly, curl the chest forward, look up. Round the spine, push away. One more, drop the belly, curl the chest up, look forward. Press away, round the spine. And sit back to your heels. Reach the legs around in front of you. Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold. If you have a cushion or a pillow or a block that you would like to lay over your legs, to then act as a little cushion as you fold. That's a wonderful option. The main reason I try to do most of these classes without any props is because 
I want these to feel accessible where anyone can take these classes if all they have is themselves and a mat or even just like a towel or a blanket to practice on. So that's why I never display or that's why I'm not currently displaying use of props, but if it was a perfect world, everyone would have a nice pillow and I would love for you to just mosey into a fold regardless of how flexible you are. You can always bend the knees here. Spend about five breaths in this forward fold. Let the spine round. Often rounding spine is thought of as a bad thing, but you can think about it as the back of your body stretching. So directing your breath to the back of your rib cage. And instead of feeling like a crunching as you hunch over, think of a lengthening as you round. Fold a little bit deeper. Release tension. Go ahead and sit up. Cross the legs one over the other. Sukasa, and then fold forward. The message is the same about the cushion. If you have a cushion or block, use it as a little headrest. If not, no worries, neither do I. <laughs> fold forward. As you can see, I'm rocking side to side. Of course, you can always take a lotus pose or a double pigeon or a gomukasana or something like that if you'd rather do that. Anything that gets into the outer hips for you. But since my hips are tight, I get quite the deep stretch just from a regular seated um, cross-legged position. Go ahead and sit on up. And yogis, this is where I will leave you. So if you would like to continue on your practice journey, I've set you up pretty well where you should feel pretty open. And if you have more energy, then continue your movement and see where it leads you. If you'd like to rest, take a Shavasana, lie down, close your eyes, let yourself just be still for five minutes and enjoy that rest. Um, if you'd like to continue practicing, I have more classes on the channel that you could pull up as well. Um, and I'll be uploading more as the weeks come. So much love to each one of you. Thank you for practicing with me. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you here soon. I'm committed to being around and posting a video at least multiple times a month. So check back. Let me know what you think. I love y'all so much. Peace out, okay? Bye.